And a live look outside on this first alert weather day as an atmospheric river sends a pair of powerful storms toward the Bay Area. I'm here with First Alert Chief Meteorologist Paul Hagen in the Virtual View studio. Joining me now to provide a little more perspective on what exactly is happening? I mean, this is not the yeah. first time we've seen an atmospheric river come through here. No, and we throw those terms around, and it's worth every once in a while kind of resetting, redefining yeah. what the term atmospheric river is, because we've seen several of mm. these over the past several weeks. So we're going to step over here and take a look at really what we're talking about overall and bring in some of our three-dimensional elements here. These atmospheric rivers are narrow channels of air that transport copious amounts of water through the atmosphere. These atmospheric rivers can, can carry more water through the atmosphere over our heads compared to the amount of water that flows through the mouth of the Mississippi River. And the reason we call them atmospheric rivers isn't just that similarity. It's also that they're relatively narrow compared to the entire scope of the atmosphere, only about 250 to just short of 400 miles across. But they are bringing all that moisture across the ocean. But eventually they run into land, specifically the West Coast. And as that air runs into land, it gets forced up, especially by the topography around the Bay Area, with all those coastal ranges. And as that air goes up, it gets squeezed. Just think of holding a sponge and squeezing it from the bottom. Some of the water is going to fall out, and that is exactly what happens. As you squeeze the atmosphere, the topography squeezes that air overhead, and it results in moderate to heavy rainfall across the Bay Area, heavy snowfall within the Sierra, depending on exactly where the moisture comes from. If it's tropical, then it's not going to be be as likely to result in that heavier snow in the Sierra. Now, these have happened more frequently recently, and one of the influences of that has been the El Nino event that has been underway since last year. It is that unusually warm ocean water right around the equator. So we've got plotted on the globe here is the sea surface temperature anomaly. How warm are things in the yellow and red shadings compared to what's normal for the surface of the ocean? And that warm ocean water warms up the air above it, and that disrupts the flow of weather, not just right above where the El Nino event is occurring, but around the entire planet. And generally, what we see across the United States is a signal towards wetter than normal conditions for the southern half of the U.S., but also, more specifically, in our neck of the woods, a signal towards those wetter conditions for Southern California. For the Bay Area, we tend to be on the northern edge of that signal towards wetter than normal conditions, but it's been especially evident. This pattern, if you just look at the rainfall that has occurred during the month of February, the percentage of normal rainfall to this point in the month, and for the Bay Area, we're running at 130 to 200 percent of normal rainfall to this point in February, but you look farther to the south, all of that purple to transitioning to gray and white. We're talking about 200 to 400 percent of normal rainfall from the central coast into Southern California. And of course, there is more rain on the way. This first atmospheric river is going to have its greatest impact, not in Southern California, but basically everywhere north of Point Conception. So the Bay Area, the Central Coast, the North Coast and the Sierra, along with the Sacramento Valley. But the second atmospheric river is going to be more of a statewide event, sending bands of heavier rain, not just back into the Bay Area, but also into Southern California, where they're going to face like a us, the threat of more flooding, more mudslides, and this is going to add up feet of snow in the Sierra. So just a little perspective on what's happening on the bigger picture scale. We'll focus again on what's going to be happening in our neck of the woods hour by hour coming up in the full forecast in just a few minutes.